Hello everybody. So the objective of this of this lecture is to solve some of the examples that we haven't solved in the previous video lecture. Okay, so the first example was if we want to a signal lamp, so if a signal lamp is required to be switched on, if a pump is running and the pressure is satisfactory, or if the lamp test switch is closed. So here we have some logic actions. So that a signal lamp is required to be switched on. The first condition, so if a if a pump is running and the pressure is satisfactory, okay, or if the lamp test switch is closed, okay, so we have an OR condition. So to do so, we can simply, okay, say, okay, uh, the, uh, we have, the, we sh have, we should, for example, activate the pump. Okay, so here we have the pump output so it's actuated using a certain switch and here we can say okay if we have the pump is actuated and the pressure is satisfactory so we have a sensor that indicates that the pressure is satisfactory okay or the lamp switch is closed okay so here we have the lamp switch okay is closed so the or condition and here we will turn on the lamp okay so this is the idea and this is for one for the pump and the other one is for the sensor and here we have for example a switch to control the pump pump switch this is an example uh, the first part is not precise yet in the question so you can simply use these two lines. So here you have the pump that is related to the pump output. The other example, so consider a valve that is to be operated to lift the load when a pump is running and either the lift switch or a switch indicating that the load has not already been lifted and is at the bottom of its lift channel or is operated. So we have here, we need to activate the valve and this valve need to be operated to lift a load okay but it will be oper it will start the operation when a pump is running so the first condition and either the lift switch or switch indicating that the load has not been lifted so this is the first condition we have an end condition but then all of this condition okay so so here, and either the left switch or switch indicating the load has not already been lifted and is at the bottom of its lift channel is operated. So here we have an end and then we have an OR. And the opposite of what we had in the first example where we had an end and then we had an OR. So here, so we, we need a switch to run the pump first. Okay, and the pump, once the pump is turned on, it can be done in several ways. This is not the objective. The objective is after what we, after the pump. So the valve should be operated. If the pump is running, first of all, so this is the pump. And, okay, either the lift switch or a switch indicating that the load has not already been lifted and is at the bottom of the center is operated. So we have a sensor here. Okay, so to say, okay, this one is for the lift switch. Okay, and the other one is the, uh, the load has not already been lifted. Okay, and it has the bottom, يعني, it may be a limit switch or something like that. يعني, we can say the switch indicating, okay, so we can say it's a limit switch, for example. Okay, and then here this one activate the valve. Okay, so this is the ladder deck. So the, this is the solution of the first two examples. Other two examples, so we have, if we have three fire sensors, so three fire sensors provide inputs to a fire alarm system. The system is turned on by any of the sensors and remains on until cleared by an external input. So we have an external input to clear, to clear the 
their alarm. So, so once we press on any alarm, uh, okay, so any sensor, once the sensor is turned on, the alarm will be turned on and it will remain turned on until clearing using an external input. So here we should have a switch which is normally closed for the external input. So say, okay, it will pass until pressing on this one. And then here we have the signal of the sensor. So we have the first sensor or the second sensor or the third sensor. Okay, so since we have an OR condition, so any one of these will activate the alarm system. So this is the alarm. And these three are the sensor, S1, S2, S3, for example. And this one is the external input. So to reset the alarm system. But it should remain on. So if the sensor turn, all the sensors are turned off. If we don't up, up, click on this one or press on this one, okay, so the alarm should be on. So we need to add here the state of the, the latching for the alarm. And in this case, we, we can satisfy the objective of this example. The second example, so when the start contacts of a conveyor are closed, so we have a conveyor and we, we, we close the contacts for the start, the output causes the workpiece to move. This continues until a light beam is interrupted and resets, causing the output to cease. A stop button is available to stop the movement at any time. So we need to move the conveyor until detecting a light beam. But this light beam, once it's interrupted, it will reset. Yeah, it will go to zero. Okay, so it will move until receiving the light beam. And we have a stop button also to stop the movement at any time. So we can start also, so to agree to, to how to think about it. So the stop button should stop everything from operation. So we can use the stop button here. So uh, sorry, it's normally closed. No, it should pass the current, but if we press, okay, it will break the contact. So this is a normally closed station. So this is the stop button. And the stop button, okay, is uh, usually uh, after the stop button, we have a start button. The start to start the motion, okay. And then once we press on start, so we we'll start moving our element, but we need also something to say okay so uh, we need to start the motion uh, so we need to move until a light beam is interrupted and reset so until resetting the light beam. so for this one we can say okay we have a sensor okay that will uh, move this one so a normally closed also sensor for the light beam so light sensor if you want to say Okay, and all of this will activate the output. Okay, so the output is a conveyor, or the conveyor motor, if I want to say. And then here we have the latching to keep the memory of the start. So once we press on stop, it will start, and then we can keep moving. We can also do this using the set and reset uh, diagram. So we can use also the values for setting and resetting according to the value. So this, uh, the light sensor will reset, okay, and the start will set, and the stop is a precaution before. So we can do it in the following way. So we have the reset is for the, uh, and this one is connected to the light sensor. Okay, so here we have the light sensor. And here on the set, we have the start. And here the conveyor. And ab above these two, we have, and honey, we don't have the line, but instead, we have the stop. 
okay here the stop that will stop all the motion all the action okay, so we can say okay we have this one so this is the second pair of questions so in this example we have the pneumatic system similar to what we had in the exercise and we need to control the a two two cylinders a and b with limit switches a minus a plus b minus and b plus detecting the limits of the piston rod movement and we need to give the sequence a plus b plus a minus b minus actuated using a start button so here we have the limit switches okay so once we say a plus we need to move in this direction then b plus so the first one we will move in this direction until reaching the end so once a plus is activated so we need to move forward d plus so this is the second action until reaching the b plus here and once we reach b plus a plus, a will start going back in the a minus direction until reaching a minus and at the end b will return to b minus so the sequence a plus means moving forward for a and a minus means moving backward so the solution here is can be done using uh, plc in the following way so we have a start so if we are in start and limit switch is in b minus okay so it should be here uh, we will activate solenoid a plus okay uh, and it will remain uh, activated okay so if until limit switch b plus is reached so once we reach b plus b plus will activate so here uh, once we reach a plus will activate b plus which will start the motion and uh, etc okay so this is the idea let's take these examples now for the timer so if you want to cascade timers to have on off cycle timer for example so we can use this diagram so the first one is n1 t2 so t2 is a timer 2 t1 is the timer 1 so for example here it's set for five seconds so uh, if we press on input 1 so to start the operation uh, timer 2 is normally closed so the current will should pass okay so the timer 1 will start counting so after 5 seconds timer 1 will uh, output so the switch of the timer 1 will close and the output will be energized and the output is connected to output 1 for example it may be a lamp like in the second question flash a light on okay and uh, it may be a motor it may be a conveyor it may be uh, anyway any type of outputs so now once it's activated so once t1 also is activated so we'll activate output one and t2 sorry this is for t2 so it will activate the output and it will activate also the timer two and when timer two is finished so this one will be off okay so the current will stop passing okay i know this one is normally closed so once the timer finished this one will open so the contact will be opened and accordingly uh, now we will st stop executing the output and no, t1 is not activated anymore so t1 is not on anymore so this is what happening when we click on one after five seconds t1 will be on until click uh, t2 is activated so once t2 is activated uh okay after five seconds okay so uh, t1 will be again activated and then we will keep doing this until stopping so timer one will activate timer two and timer two once timer two is off it will activate timer one and so it will keep blinking like this example so here we can change the light into output and here we will we have finished this example for the traffic line sequencing so we have already seen uh, seen it in class i want just to point something to the to the graph set so usually this is what is called the graph set for the graph set you have the states and we have the conditions to switch from one state to another so we have a state so here we it's the beginning of the program then we have the start 
condition so to, to, to pass to the other state. So this represents states, so no action will, will happen once we read these states. And here, the, the block connected to the state is the action to be done. And this is what usually is done for, for example, here, it will light, uh, it will turn on a light, or it will turn on, it can turn on a motor, a conveyor, etc. In this example, so we have to control a machine, that, uh, and the machine is required to direct six poles along one path for packaging in a box, and then 12 volts along another path for packaging in another box. So we have a deflector plate that need to be actuated, so this one can be controlled by a photocell sensor that gives an output every time a ball passes it. Use a switch button to start the conveyor belt and CTU timers. As we have mentioned, CTU means count up counters. Okay, so we have to uh, control, so we have to count the values, so we can, we have always to st think about starting the program, so we'll have an input to start the program. Okay, so this is, we can call it input 1 or N1, okay. And uh, this input usually, once it's activated, it should reset all the counters and start the operation from the beginning. So we can say this one will be connected to the reset of the counter. And the reset of the counter, as we have seen on the counter, it can be represented in several ways depending on what counter we are using. So if we want to say, okay, uh, this is the, we have the, have the count, uh, the count up, and here we have the reset. So we'll do it in this way. So we can say instead, okay, no, we have the input one. And the input one here is controlling the reset, okay, in the counter. And here we have another input, which is the sensor input, uh, the photocell sensor to count the elements. And this one, input two, so it's the sensor input. Okay, sensor, photocell sensor. Okay, to count. So this is the value that will be gone to see you. So here, we, when we press on input one, so we will reset the output, or also we can reset in another condition once the program is terminated. And once the code is terminated, okay, so what means terminated? So we have already six balls have passed in one path and 12 in another path. So we have, we can reset using one counter to is finished. So here we will have counter two. Then when counter two is finished, and if you have another counter, this is counter one. Okay, so this is so counter one, and counter one usually is a counter K six, so it will count six elements. And we have a counter two to count to twelve elements. So once the twelve elements is finished, so now the program will be finished. Okay. Then we, we have counted 6 and 12. So if we want to repeat, we can repeat from this part. Okay, so once counter 1 is activated, so we need to move. So this is the counter 1. Okay, so here we say, okay, we don't have anything. So it will activate an output. The output, whatever is the output. Okay. And then... For the second counter, so the second counter also should be initialized, reset if counter 2 finished. I know we are repeating all the experiments, so counter 2 should be reset. Or also if we apply on N1. So if we press on N1, that means we need to force the resetting. In this case, we can say, okay, we may have the same two elements here, but with the difference that to count, we have the input of the photocell sensor also. Uh, with counter one, and we need to count after counter one is, is finished. So we can say, okay, we have here into, okay, so it's the same photocell sensor above, but here we will add in order not to count the six and then the 12, so we'll count 18. Here we have the counter one. So once the counter one is on, so that means we have already finished the six values. Okay, so this one here, we will connect this one to CU, and here we'll connect it to the 
reset okay and on this one we have input one or uh, or what's called the counter two to reset all so we can reset using counter two or input one and here we have the our relay to control and this is counter two with k12 so we have 12 values okay so this is the basic idea and this is the last example regarding the domestic central heating system and you can look at the solution in the second page the last page of the slides so here the idea we have the PLC we have a stop button to stop the actuation we have a run button to start we have the clock the boiler sensor the room sensor and the water sensor so here what we need to do is to uh, uh, the, the central heating is thermostatically controlled according to the temperature and will supply hot, hot water to the radiator system in the house as well as the hot water tank to provide hot water from taps in the house. So pump motors have to be switched on to direct the hot water, etc. So here you can look at this one. So we have a room sensor and water sensor to check if everything is okay. So based on the value of the sensor, these are normally closed. Okay. And based on the signal of the clock and also boiler sensor is not uh, so it's not uh, heated at the maximum and if we click on run and stop okay well on stop I think it should be normally closed so we will activate the boiler and once we activate the boiler and we are not at the room sensor so we'll print the value of M1 and if we want to access the boiler and not having the other sensor we'll turn off valve M2 so this is the solution of this example if you need any question, you can ask me during the lecture or before, and good preparation for the quiz and for your final exams. See you in class on Wednesday.